TFL EV is brought to you by Flow Charger, maker of reliable, high-quality charging stations for your electric vehicle. Did you know that the days of a diesel or a natural gas-powered school bus are getting close to an end? Well, they might be because I'm sitting right here in the production all-electric international IC school bus. And in this video, I want to show you all about it, take it on a test drive, and uh, yeah, see what an all-electric school bus is all about. This is pretty special for me. I have never been behind the wheel of a proper school bus. Uh, the steering wheel, of course, is quite large, um, and there's several controls here. No cruise control, but the door open and close. Super easy, just one tiny push. And of course, flashers, emergency lights are right here on the right. So starting this bus um, is a key right here. There's a first key cycle to get the 12 volt system online. And then the second key cycle to make the bus fully operational. Uh, there's not really a transmission with gears, but you do have neutral reverse and drive. Uh, it's basically a direct drive configuration. Here are my headlamps, pretty easy. And this is a way to control my regen braking, but I would just leave it in three. And uh, I'm gonna get it on the track with Kyle and see how it drives. All right, Kyle, where should we go? All right, Andre, let's go. <laughs> let's hit the track, let's go. <laughs> uh, before we go, can you introduce yourself, please? Yes, hi, I'm Kyle Mackey. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the IC bus today and uh, have a good time. The gauges on the all-electric school bus are very cool. First of all, all digital cluster. On the left here, you have zero means, of course, we're not moving. Uh, down, negative 100 means regenerative braking, regen. So putting power back into the battery pack. And of course, up, it's where you're applying power. Right here, I have about my battery meter, 89% charge, about 164 miles left. And this is after a full morning of driving already. Uh, I love this. The battery temps and the motor temps uh, are shown very clearly, so you know what's going on. Also, your regen level. It goes from one, which is about 30%, to about 60%, to 100%. I usually love leaving it in full 100% regen because you're putting the most energy into your battery, increasing your range, and also not using your brakes as much. Believe it or not, most people don't realize it, but your average school bus does 80 miles total for a day, 40 in the morning, 40 in the afternoon. So okay. this particular bus has 315 kilowatts. Uh, it's the largest battery pack in the industry. It gives us about 200 miles of range. Um, that 200 mile range, just so you know, Andre, is, is at load um, with heat or AC on, with some terrain. There's a lot of marketing numbers out there that make you think that, oh, this thing will go, you know, 500 miles, but we're really comfortable giving that 200 mile range as a real world example. We call it real, uh, re reliable range. But we're very comfortable with 200 miles, so. Well, right now I'm at 90% charge. Yes, sir. And it says about 173 miles left. Correct. And I, right, right now I'm feeling regen braking. Um, and it's really typical, if you've driven an electric car already, a Tesla, anything else, right? Yep. You kind of know that feeling where you're kind of letting off the uh, accelerator pedal and the regen, the motor's becoming basically working in the reverse, so to speak. Yeah, how, how I like to describe it is, you know, uh, regenerative braking is like an electric parachute. When I let off the throttle, I'll feel the vehicle slow down and we're capturing that energy and throwing it back into the battery pack. So, you know, diesel equivalent would be like an engine retarder. Um, this does a couple things for us. This helps us extend our range. It helps us uh, save brake pad wear. You know, we see significant increase in length of brake pads. Um, but really, you're, you're getting more efficiency, more range out of the battery pack, allowing it to recharge. When we are slowing down like that, we do have three different levels, but in level threes are most aggressive. When we're slowing down like that, there's a calculated deceleration speed. When we cross that threshold, our brake lights actually come on, so the passengers behind us or drivers behind us know that we're slowing down. 
Are you ready for a full launch? Let's go. I'm Let's born ready. Burn! Woo! Burn them! <laughs> Smoke the tires! <laughs> so, I'm noticing one thing. Um, uh, first of all, my foot is all the way on, on the floor. Um, and you kind of moderated that, that electric power, right? It's at about 85% right now. So, so Andre, the, the biggest thing is that we really used our, de our diesel vehicles as a benchmark. So this vehicle could be much more high performance, but you're going to do a couple things there. You're going to make drivers, um, I don't want to say be scared, but they're not going to drive it the same as they're used to driving today. You're going to wear tires out faster. You're really going to cause more more issues than good yeah. just by giving you that, that wow factor. We really want efficiency. These vehicles have a job to do every day. And we want to make sure that they can do that. So we, I hate to say we detune them, but we definitely optimize performance to be very equivalent to what our diesel uh, buses and trucks do today. Well, plus you don't want the uh, the kids and flying around, right? I don't know. When I was a kid, I felt like my bus driver tried to make us sick, but that's a story for another day. Well, it's also going over bumps and launching <laughs> yourself up, yes, right? Yes. This this bus rides very smooth with the uh, the air suspension. So this electric CE series school bus uh, has a lot of the powertrain and components also available on the EMV commercial truck. So the battery cooling and warming module, the battery management uh, is happening under here. I can show you that on that big EMV truck as well. Uh, now walking backwards and a little bit more. Over here is the charge port on the passenger side. DC fast charging is available. This is a standard plug, uh, CCS. Uh, up to 125 kilowatt charging speeds are available. So that's what? Uh, this is a, like a 300 kilowatt hour battery pack, a little bit more than that. So maybe two and a half hours of full recharge, but you can also charge it at slower rates overnight because school buses uh, only run during the day usually. So if you're not using it, you can slow charge it overnight. Another thing I can show you here on the driver's side is uh, the air compressor is down here uh, for the air system because of course the air brakes and the suspension. Um, so air compressor is easily accessible over here. And the batteries are between the frame rails, right? Yeah, we did that for a couple of reasons. Keep them safe, keep them protected in between the frame rails. Um, also, obviously, any side impact or collision issues, uh, we want to make sure the batteries are safe and protected. And also, kind of low center of gravity. Yeah, funny story. Uh, there's a there's a standard test that every vehicle, bus, or commercial truck has to pass. Um, where basically you drive through a gate at a certain speed, and you turn hard left, and you try and get traction control to come on. We failed that test, and we couldn't figure out why. We were checking sensors, all this other stuff. Come to find out with the, the center of gravity being so much lower with the batteries being lower, yeah. we were so stable, we had to increase the speed to prove that the traction control came on. So uh, it's a very stable vehicle, especially with, even with regen. Let's say on an icy day, uh, your wheels started to spin. The vehicle is very smart. Traction control would kick in, disable re regen, so you wouldn't have any issues driving down the road. How do you like the steering? That's another thing that people uh, don't always think about. We don't have pulleys and belts uh, driving pumps. We had to make an electric power steering pump that felt very similar to our, our diesel buses today. It feels super normal. Uh, I mean, this is not a sports car that you need precision. And right. like total communication but it just feels it just feels nice and Absolutely. easy have you ever wondered what the coolest motorcycle ever made is well i have a definitive answer for you it's this 1970 honda trail 70 that our good buddy andy smith fully rebuilt for us it's got a rebuilt engine all kinds of new old stock parts on this bike and we did an entire video series showing the rebuild and showing these bikes in action and what they're capable of and now this bike is being auctioned to benefit biker down a charity that benefits bikers and their families after an incident. So it's going to support a really great cause and that's all thanks to our friends at Rider Justice. If you're interested in getting your hands on one of the coolest motorcycles ever made, head on over to tflbids.com right now. You don't have much time left. I'm behind the rear of the bus to show you the motor. Uh, this is the way it's um, in production right now. Of course, in the future, there'll also be integrated e-axle solutions 
Um, yes, it can produce upwards of about 300 horsepower, monstrous torque, but of course it's not about speed or acceleration or torque. It's just to get uh, the children safely to and from school and their events. And it's connected via this drive shaft all the way to the differential. So it's kind of a pusher setup. Uh, the motor's in the back, it's uh, powering the axle. Uh, in the future, this, these motors will be smaller and integrated actually where the differential is currently. Keep an eye out, you'll see these in your neighborhood soon, I promise. Well actually they've been on sale for the year. Yes, we have uh, we have our first initial launch was in Canada and people always wonder why I went to Canada, but uh, diesel's very expensive in Canada. Uh, and also the terrain is tough, the climate's tough. It was a great a great testing bed and our customers love them up there. So uh, California, out west, we, we've got we've got them hitting the streets across the country right now. So have you tested it? I think a lot of people always ask me about range decrease in cold climates. Right. How does that affect it? Have you tested that? Yes, sir. So we, we have several testing sites. We've done a lot of testing up in uh, the colder parts of Minneapolis or Minnesota, uh, where it's very cold, uh, windy and, and cold. Uh, you know, heat and, and uh, cold affect the batteries different ways, but we see about a 10 to 15% mileage loss. Uh, one of the things that we do is we help our customers understand what that looks like. So we want to make sure that we show them their routes and what the bus can do or truck can do. So even on those cold or hot days. So. But you have a battery conditioning system as well. Yep. Right? So actually off the side of the frame rail you'll see it's a big box. Um, I, I say batteries are like my grandma. They want to say 65 all the time. So the driver doesn't, and that's another thing, the driver doesn't have to flip any switches. They turn the, the key on. The battery system manages it. Yeah, Same with plugging in. If we plug it in at night, the battery system is running, keeping the batteries happy. And that's going to help our range too. If you get in the bus in the morning on a cold day and it's been plugged in all night, it helps keep those batteries warm, ready to go, ready to get to work. All right, Kyle, so we're, yes. right now we're in your next facility. Yes, sir. This is where you do some development engineering. Is that, is that right? That's correct. This is our e-mobility office. Uh, we work hand in hand with our corporate office out of Lyle, Illinois. Uh, but this is where the magic happens for electrification. Sweet. So when talking about school buses, you know, we had a lot of fun at the racetrack. Yeah, for sure. Uh, driving around. But let's get serious for just a moment because yeah. safety is really paramount, especially for the school bus application. Absolutely. So can you tell me about, you know, how do you design it with the batteries and such? Can we look at some batteries? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, yeah. Go, let's go over here. We have our engineering bench over here. Okay. Um, and what you'll find over here is we actually have a set of batteries that were uh, used for crash testing. We had a vehicle we sled tested and uh, not only did the vehicle survive the test, but as you can see, we're still using these batteries for testing and development on our bench today. Um, the batteries we chose are a, a chemistry called lithium iron phosphate. They're some of the most dependable as far as life cycle, duty cycle, you know, charge up, discharge yeah. cycles in, in, the, in the world. Um, but also the chemistry, they're very, very safe for uh, the least amount of risk of thermal event. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a thing we all hear on our social media yes. pages of yes. thermal events. Yes. We'll, we'll just keep it at that. Okay. Um, this chemistry is very uh, unlikely to have an issue. The funny thing, or not funny, but the ironic thing is if there is a thermal event, the best way to put the fire out is with water. So water or kitty litter is what we okay. would recommend in our first responder training on how to put these out. And there's also kill switches, right, or at least one. Uh, so first responders, you know, you, you work with those organizations quite a lot too, right? Yes, yeah, sir. We have a first responder guide published on the uh, NFPA website, okay. but also my team, we go around the country and train local fire departments and first responders to help them understand what to do in case of an accident. We do have two shutoff switches, a low voltage switch as well as a high voltage switch. Um, ironically enough, high voltage will not work if there's no low voltage. Okay. So we, we recommend turning low voltage off first to disconnect the high voltage contactors. Okay. Can you show me at least? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Where? So in our 12 volt battery box, we've got this switch right here. This switch here turns on and off. Uh, that's what controls the high volt or the uh, low voltage system. And then right above your head here is our high voltage switch. Thing to note is there's zero high voltage here. This just controls high voltage. Okay. Um, but as I said, the low voltage will ultimately control the high voltage. Okay. Now in a situation where we can't get to these. Um, we teach first responders how to pull the MSDs out of the vehicle to disconnect the high voltage system. Or ultimately, if we can't do that, if we cut the 12 volt main battery cable underneath the hood, that'll kill the power as well. So, the, so then the batteries you just showed me mm -hmm. are also connected to this test bench, Yes, correct? sir. 
So we're very proud of this. This is, in essence, a vehicle without the frame rails or body getting yeah. in the way. All of our components, as you said, the batteries, we've got our power steering pump, our towable batteries, our, our controllers. Over there? Yes, sir. Um, that's the power steering module on the bottom. That silver box there, that's the, yep. So that that's the power steering module. That's what produces or pushes the pressure through the pump. Okay. Um, this is our heater. This is actually a tube heater. So it's basically a coil that has glycol run through it to help heat up the glycol and goes through the firewall to keep the, the driver warm. Okay. Uh, this is what we call our S box or communication box. This is where our first responders pull MSDs out of the vehicle to disable high voltage when need be. Um, we have an air compressor, we've got our battery cooling system. But what's really nice about this bench is all the software for the production vehicles will run through here and our engineers will make sure there's no faults, make sure there's no issues, make sure communication happens amongst the CAN, CAN bus without causing any problems. So this vehicle has a key, we turn it on, you'll hear the system do a couple checks. You got your gauge cluster? Got our cluster there, yeah. yep. So we can see by our lights up here, we have our 12 volt power and now we have high voltage, the so high voltage is on. Um, and like I said, we can do. This is an accelerator. We, we have an accelerator pedal. There is a motor underneath Charging. there. If we want to do some charger development, we can do charger testing there. Okay. Our gear selector. Like I said, I mean, we have headlights. Everything we need to do for the vehicle, it dims it just like it would in a normal vehicle, uh, is right here. If you come around on this side, you can see our power electronic system. So, one thing people always notice when we lift the hood of these vehicles, there's still a radiator. Well, there's still coolant running from the front of the bumper, the front bumper to the back, cooling the engine or the motor in the back, it comes to the radiator. So these are coolant pumps. So we simulate all that. Um, future benches we're going to build are actually going to be on frame rails so that we can do proper hose lengths and cable development. Um, but like I said, we're very proud of this. This is this has saved us a ton of time in the field with diagnostics and repairs. We can come here and simulate issues and figure things out remotely. So. If there was ever a best use case scenario for a heavy vehicle that's electrified, I think school bus is it. First of all, it's quiet. It has very, I mean, no exhaust while it's sitting near a school. So that's nice. Um, stop and go traffic and dropping people off and picking them up helps regen and helps your range. So overall, as soon as uh, the battery technology gets a little bit better, uh, the prices go down, for battery tech and electric motors, I, I think this is probably the best use of electricity in a heavy vehicle. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, we're at alltfl.com, one-stop shop for everything automotive. And of course, we have a dedicated electric channel, TFL EV.